Okay, hip lifts, here we go. So let's settle into the front of our bolster. We're gonna start by kind of sharing uh, the information in your leg muscles and your spinal column and that um, the how you arrive into the hips today is going to be super symmetrical. So there's really no uh, identification with one over the other. Like this hip gets more, um, uh, is easier to stretch than the other. Right now it's, it's very, it's unbiased. <laughs> Again. So we'll start with a kind of, we're gonna sit upright to begin. So refrain from laying back quite yet because once you're on your spine, you're back, you're down. So take a belt, wrap it around overhead, around your midsection. And then as you have that looped up and fit, you wanna fit your, your belt so that it is, it kind of seems like this. It's like straight forward to your scooped up feet that are together. The knees are out and feet are scooped in. And when I have the belt like this kind of, this more of a slender pull in the center, it seems to be my feet are a little bit more in foot prayer, right? They're touching. Sometimes they touch belt more than others. Today they seem to, but when I'm here and there's a little resistance and and a little challenge, I got my knees pretty high. So what I want you to do is see if you can lower the blocks down so that more of the thigh touches to the block. Twist to your left, bring your right hand onto that left knee and reach your left hand onto your blanket behind you. If it's pretty high up for your arm's length, like it's too much to um, reach that high, you can always bring your hand a little closer, a little farther out, depending on your arm and simply swish through the core body. So feeling that spinal awareness in your back line, thick back ribs, and then come back to center and turn immediately to the other side. And as you hold on to the knee, your rotation comes from the arms primarily right now. We'll stay with the real basics. You now craft moving back to the center, grab your sandbag and place it so it's either across the feet or across your upper rib cage. And when you select that, if you have multiple bags of weight, you could add one to each if you have a bag of rice or so forth to your feet. But I would select primarily the rib so that we can feel where there is experience on quality of movement across the rib channel and focusing on where that force of gravity flows. So feel where your arms can relax besides you and truly giving them a few moments to clearly let go through the wrists, through the fingers and scanning the obvious choices of concentration to start, which will be the places that feel props. And then identify with the connection to your breath. Let's try to meet in the beginning of practice via breathing, consciousness, and clarify the length of your breath and the tone of how that moves through the insides, if it's moving in a gripping fashion, which is fairly normal for the inhale. It tends to be the yang part of your breathing. And if you can slowly let the pace of the breath have a mellow current and relax your eyes, and we're meeting here at the breathing. And just let that breathing stage rest with the inhale for a count of four. And the exhaling out for a count of five.
Notice the parts per unit of your breathing. It's a little bit of a different way to channel our breath focus, but it's important since it's a chemical uh, shift internally, your breath, right? It, it does tend to clearly lower the heart rate, the blood pressure. So when you feel the kind of the valve pressure move in through the nose, notice what fills up. If the sandbag is kind of dropping and it doesn't stay very situated across you and it's more movement than necessary for your consciousness, you might, or your concentration more so, you might turn the sandbag so it's uh, lengthwise. And then you can feel the diaphragmatic breathing and you can feel the a little different in the rib cage. So they're both, they both have some benefits, either across or lengthwise. But let's try to carry the rhythm of your breath so that the exhale is one to two counts longer than the inhale. And once you carry that rhythm, we're going to add a piece to the experience. So the first part of particle of real movement might be to shift your blocks. So if the blocks feel extra supportive, remember this is a practice of opening up. So if the blocks can be slid a little farther out, just to touch down to the knees edge, or if it feels like it's too much, you can pivot the blocks and contour them so that they're holding the thighs in a little more easier of like a basket, right? So the pelvis um, ends up feeling like a little more of a basin this way. Then after we choose our height of our knees, we're gonna bring our arms back and feel the arms and the whole impression of reaching. And if there can be that energy of reach through arms, channel, and then hold the hands or the elbows, right? So you have a place of connectivity. And then when the hands turn inside out, stretching back, feel that level of awareness through the inhale. And then as you exhale, let the belly relax. So the final production of breath in this phase is on the exhalation, the belly is calm. That's not always the way it is during the day. So see if you can claim that success here. And if the arms are a little bit tired from this reach, you might change and hold the elbows and you might change the crossing of the elbows for the next 30 seconds or so. Good, and let the spine have that approach of regulating its natural arch. Now with the hands relaxing their grip, feel when the arms slide down so they're closer by the sides, maybe right on the edge of your sticky mat or the space that you're practicing if there's no mat, just closer to you. And then we'll start to channel the focus in the back line of the body. So as we move our sand, what we'll need here is primarily to unbuckle and to actually slide the belt out so it's easy to hold onto. So lift up the knees, step the feet down about hips distance, and if it takes you a moment to get this belt out, what you can also work with is a little bit of swishing of the, the leg side to side, not just the knees, but also feeling the footing and that crisscross of the legs. Just sample windshield wiper side to side and start to acquire your belt in your hand so that you can use this for your, to slide into this right hip to start. So here's what we'll go with. We'll walk our feet in close towards our seat as close as they'll go in this approach. And then as you move a block or a ball, can I, either one will be fine on this, you're gonna slide it to the outer side or roll it or push it to the outer side of the upper left thigh. And as you lean that left thigh into it, half of that first pose we did, Vata 
You're gonna reach your belt under your right foot. And then as you lift up through that right leg, hold the belt with your left hand and find that there's a fairly kind of, maybe a vigorous um, pressure system in the back of the right leg. So what I'll encourage you to do is slide the left hand down on the belt, maybe closer to you so it's an easy position for your left arm. And then lead the leg over to the left, right leg goes to the left. And notice where that concentration might be, you know, on a scale of one to 10, it might be a seven. It might not be completely, absolutely insane sensation, but you'll feel that it is driving to areas that are going to revolve around the hip at some point. So kind of feel if you jolt the leg, if you tend to soften the knee and sensation press. It's nice when you're in your home practice that you can really survey the situation and the shapes and explore in and out. It's no problem if you bring your legs straight back up, if you move it a little to the right, and just kind of feel the current state of your leg. Who knows, it might be kind of an interesting Holy, this might not be the first thing you do when you wake up. <laughs> okay. Now we're going to bend the right knee, slip the belt out, and put that foot to the left knee, and then keep leaning into that ball or block and hold on to the right knee with your left hand. Okay. So when I hold on to the knee and I pull it a little towards me, you've done this before, this shape. We've done this reclining. Um, pigeon pattern very, very often. Uh, but it's a little different if you prep it with the leg stretch. It's a slight, it's almost um, not very impressive. You might not feel as much because you've primed the hip a little bit. You kind of feel with that, feel the right arm stretching straight back. Reach back gently through the ribs versus like your identification with an arm. Like it is, it is, it feels like an arm partially because you have that rib sensation leading you into your arm. So work with that lead of the rib cage. Give it a few more moments. This is a little different approach pattern that we're working with today. So kind of stay with it if you can. If you are averse to it and decide not to switch the leg crossing and lean left, you can as well, of course. You can do what you want. You're in your safe home space, okay. Now when we take away the grip with that left hand, I want you to go almost immediately pattern the right foot down, put the ball on the outer right upper thigh, keep it so it's thigh, not too much on your hip or up on your waist. And then get the belt and slip it under that left foot. And then as you hold on, you're going to Lean that leg while well, my body's relaxed back on my bolster, but I've kind of dissected the circulation now from my lower abdominal muscles into the thigh. So feel the root, and if that right leg doesn't have any lift on it, let's say you decide not to use your blocker ball, you could do that too. So it's okay, it's just different. I find the challenge for me is I kind of slide off my bolster. So I want something over besides my thigh. It could be a blanket. It doesn't have to be a ball or a block. It's a spacer. So create the, the conversation here in your leg, you know, noticing if you move it around, the differences, there's likely a different volume of pressure around the muscle, the connective tissue. It might feel different on the side. Sometimes you can't figure out what is different, but it's different. Exactly what will flow through. And then as you feel that leg push into the belt, adjust for a few seconds here before we shift out the grab, the grasp with your hand on the belt. Is the arm pulling? Do you have the foot pushing away? What serves you better? Feeling the bone pressure, which serves to strengthen around the bone. So I want to feel pressure, some sort of 
pressure around. So there's there's a resistance would be the key, I suppose. I'm learning as I go. <laughs> okay. Now bend the left knee and place the foot to the right knee and slip off the belt and then let the leg lean over. Right hand to the left knee. If you don't want to use the ball or block under that right leg, you can move it away. It might feel better for some people who are mobile. I like to assume I'm, I'm working on my structure, um, working on uh, stability versus all flexibility. So feel where there's some balance of tone and then kind of releasing through the tone of your body. And letting your eyes soften. Does that make a difference with the awareness in the shape, in the pose? So breathing into your practice. Give it a few more. Left arm stretches back perhaps besides your head. If you have your left foot touching onto a block or sort of a random object that's near there, it could be a sandbag, it might be useful. Random, random use of props, right? Random acts of kind support here. And now this is an important element. So when I feel the reach of the ribs, whether my hand is down or it's back, what I want to do when we start leaning into these side chambers, which isn't just like a one spot on your hip, right? It's kind of the whole balance through the side to get to the hip. So what we're gonna do is a couple sage poses as we lead into it. So when you let go of that knee and the arm lowers down, it's kind of like the, the pose pops, right? Like a balloon, it's like, ah, you know, the air gets out and the intensity kind of fades. So feel how this left knee has the, the bend in it, how it works through the hip, um, crest up to the knee. I mean, these are important pieces. <laughs> it's what you identify as your body, right? These parts of it. So what we'll do is use that for our sage pose, this left leg. So as you take your body back center, you uncross, you do any windshield wipering you need to do, kind of clear it, clear the space, shift. We're going to take sleeping sage first. And the reason for this is for to ease our back muscles. So when we do our upright seated poses, they, it has a little clearance, but also to stretch the intercostals easily. So when I turn left, I want you to actually try to pivot here so that you're right up to the bolster. And I'm pretty sure all the bolsters are, are leaned up on your blanket. Uh, and there's a blanket on the top. So when I turn and I rest into my bolster, it's, you know, it's kind of satisfying. It's easy going. The blanket, if it feels too high up, you can just slide it off for the moment. It doesn't have to be there. Feel what's easier for your, for your neck and for your shoulders. If there's a possibility you can somehow get that sand onto your back, you might be able to, especially onto the lower zone, or you can generally slide it across on the low back, right? And that's a start. And it would be useful. We rarely do the sleeping sage pose in the home practice. Well, you might at home, but haven't added this in yet. So when I turn the waistband, my head can go right or left. Yours might go one direction over the other. And feel where the heart can relax. Just let the difference in influence of rotation, texture of breath, especially when your ribs feel like they touch into the object versus being on the other side of the object. As we support the ribs from the back, we support the ribs in the front through the whole practice and even on the sides. So 
So when you breathe through the nose and then you feel where that filtering goes in, as you exhale out, be sure that that passageway for the mouth is able to relax. You know, with those shoulder blades spreading apart and that stretch of the intercostals, we're going to move from relieving the back to a shape that is eventually leads to easing our back. But at first, it's a, it's a little bit of an energetic kind of storm. So stay here as long as you like. If it feels like you want to take a little nap, you might do so, okay? But those that are feeling ready to go to side sage, we'll just start to move up gradually. We'll pivot, you might move your sand away, you might keep it on, but we'll pivot the bolster. And then I'm gonna slide my arm between the blanket. So my blanket established role is not gonna be conducive to this pose, likely, it could be, I guess, it could be on the top. But as I put the blankets in a stack, Okay, we've got our arm between the blanket and bolster. Now this is where you might truly need to get interactive with something on the inside of the right knee, if you didn't already in the last shape. And then when you elevate your sand across or lengthwise, yeah, this would be ideal if your sand is feeling like it's either up to that armpit, right? And if I'm here, and I could use something overhead, a block, right? Something overhead to hold gradually into with my arm leverage. You wanna feel where there's, levers have leverage here. So I've got something under the inside of the knee as mentioned and something under my ribs as essential as it is here. And then when that arm gets big and full through the rib cage, that is that extension of circulation between the intercostals, well, between the ribs actually, and that's the intercostal. So that's the truth, right? So it's almost like they're alive and they vitalize with the inquiry into your costal breathing into the breath. Yeah, and play with the right arm's delivery method into the body. So if my arm is overhead, and that feels pretty comfortable, you can move your arm open. And you can also lay it down to your side. But can you let your head feel comfortable in the blanket? So if it's pushing down a tiny bit, if it's revolving towards the ceiling and involving relaxing the eyes. You know, they're completely interested in looking. So you might see if you can feel the experience with them closed when you're awake from time to time. And interact with the shape, just like you might with your eyes open, just kind of see if there's a different way that you search through the shape with moving your props around. Okay, so we'll cycle through a few layers of costal breathing. So arm could be over, arm could be down. And then as you in breath, see if you can feel the movement of the ribs. It seems easy, I know, but feeling that expansion versus like the lower belly. See if you can find the ribs moving and deflating. So a few more. Now where the spine is in this kind of nice curve, it's a different curve than we sense standing. I feel that curve pattern. And then as we start to come up, what we're gonna do is 
turn the body weight towards the right or left, sorry, and then you're going to let your sand slough off. And I want us to move our, so it's a little bit of a kind of a S curve through the body or through the spinal curve. And then when we come up, we're going to take our bolster to sit on it. I think your blanket can be changed behind you after you get up on your bolster. It's a little easier. So my blanket's behind me. I'm going to situate myself so I'm a little turn to you. Um, take a blanket off. Well, actually, you could keep them both. I'm going to keep them on for my twist. Maybe it'll be better. So <clears throat> deal with the program, Nicole. <laughs> okay. So as we take our body line forward, what we'll need is our blocks. Two in front. And then as I put the sand on the right thigh to start. Now the sand needs to be kind of offered um, in, uh, if you have two, you're going to want one on each leg. But one is just fine for this beginning set. Um, we have our sand onto that right leg. Now with the legs and this cross-legged pattern, I'm going to give two options. One's pretty bendy and one's, I think, kind of a normal option. Okay, so the normal option is a good one to start with, would be the ball or maybe something under that left knee, just so you have some cushion. And then when you approach leaning forward, see if you can get the kind of installment of the sitting bones. So it's almost as if you learned how to kind of bear uh, the weight of the seat and the abdominal current see, feels like it can move forward and back, kind of pulsing. And as you lean forward, that offers that back line a little more spread of stretch into the right hip. Well, this is an obvious choice for it a beginning of a hip opener, okay? Now those that want to do fire logs pose, what you'll do is likely you got to start just from scratch. You got to start from scratch with your fire logs. <laughs> and you'll cross the right leg straight up on over the left leg, right? So it's a complete crossing, right, of pose. It's a lot more knee involvement, right? And then I wouldn't probably use sand on this. It's just too much. And then I'll take the blocks forward and lean. Okay, third option, we even have another one, would be crossing the leg steer pose. So you have the right leg smack dab right on top of the left, but it's with the knee angle, so it's a little easier than fire logs. A little bit easier than this one, I think, for my knees. But go to the simple one, too. You could be right back into this simple cross-legged, stand up, and go forward, but linger in this forward mode for about another 45 seconds. So see if you can find that position of forward and feel if the belly is relaxed enough. So it's almost as if the belly pulls the back musculature forwards and stretches that open, right? Versus the position of rounding like this. So I want you to try to feel that you're kind of moving through your ribs, okay. I guess in a home practice, I don't have to wear so many layers to class. <laughs> so nice, it's so comfortable. I don't know how good it could be until now I'm really doing that. <laughs> okay. Now feeling that steeping in the right hip, if you're fire logs or your steer pose, it's probably both hips. It's probably not gonna stay in one. But let's take the twist. So we're gonna all move our body leg zone so that our sand, if you're using it, is on your left leg only. You're gonna cross the right leg over the left with no ball under the left knee. If this isn't a lot, a really, a, um, accessible in your joints, you can also put a block in front of your left knee and put your foot on the block, opening the knee. Okay, so it's not a closed gap with the knee. If it works fine, go with it. So as I hold onto that left leg, I'm going to embrace uh, below the knee so that it actually starts to stretch around this right hip. Okay, so when you turn, you're rotating. Now I'm going to sh just show you this version, but then I'm going to actually stand up and kind of just to focus on where you're trying to thread this in your hip. So when you rotate, see if you can feel that full motion via the left arm. 
and trying to correct the turn in the waist to the right side. So if your left arm is, is just a little tense-ish, you can work with trying to stretch your tricep before you take a twist, like stretching your elbow up and back, and then take a twist. But stay with the program. Don't stand up quickly like this. <laughs> the focus, though, is that elbow is on this outer side of the leg, and you're actually trying to turn to get this stretch through the side band of the leg. I think it's tricky in a twist to really get identify with that. It takes time. It seems like it's a spine thing, but it's really connecting into the layer of the low back, right? The lumbars have that support. The thoracic vertebrae in the middle have that clear, distinct advantage here to turn you. So with a few more moments, if you're not relying on any props behind you, you might get them a little closer and kind of use that for a proper support. Maybe push up the blanket, get it there so you feel like your hand is on the support and encourage a few more moments of rotation. If the arm is what's difficult to press into that leg, that should be where you feel the most heat is the back of that left arm right now. You might bend your elbow and really feel a little bit more ease with the direction. And then let's counter twist it to the left just so that we have good measure with the spine. And then we'll be in here, this one for a very brief time to unwind the spinal column. But notice where your feel is in your shoulders, the exchange in the right shoulder now. Okay, and then feel when you turn back center. We'll take our sand off and we're gonna take pigeon with the left leg front. So I'm gonna move a sand, <clears throat> sand off, blanket off, then one blanket behind my bolster at the very base of the bolster, right up to the edge. And then take the right leg, stretch it behind you, of course. And then when your left foot is back, can you merge your body through the leg? That was the base for your twist and not the hips pose that you were working with. You were just on the right hip primarily. So now we've kind of pushed it into the left inner leg. So my blocks could be very low. Mentioning before when some of you maybe got an extra bolster or extra pillow, you can also put that under your elbows on this one. Now it doesn't have to be a bolster, right? It could be a pillow, um, couch cushion. It might be nice to have something similar to what you're sitting on. And that way you can let your arms press into the, the density of it versus a block or use a block or the floor. Feel the weight into that left hip. Lift the back foot up, feel the pressure of bending a knee and feel through the left channel of the leg. You know, those of you that are pretty comfortable with this position with the knee bending, see if you can stay with that, but slide the knee back versus the uh, anticipation of maybe holding the foot, right? That's a version is to hold the foot behind you. But you almost want to go slowly so you get the roots of this one. You get the thigh trying to stretch back, which is exactly where we'll keep moving. So the right thigh is going to lower down through the foot. Feel the arch through the spine. You know, as you curl the back like a cat shape, so you're going to feel that C shape in your back. Head lowers down. Feel the spine. And then feel that rebound of the arch of the back. Now take these slow. So you're alternating arching and rounding. And for once, if you have something under your elbows, it might help your neck here, really might help out. 
versus too much forward bend doing it. So if we do cat cow, it's different on the neck than this position, right? My arms are higher up. So I would try this because it's no wrist pressure at all. Like there's no pressure on my hands, my bones there. So I can actually manipulate and feel my back musculature and my hip. If it's just too high volume in your hip, you can always pass, okay? So when we come out of this one, we start to lean our body weight now to our hands. Um, if you have that extra cushion, push it away, but toes under, okay? And then as you start to come um, back, we're gonna move into an up dog. So what I want you to do is let the left thigh slide back and alternate bending your knees. What happened to the up dog? <laughs> okay. Well, it seems like an organic thing to do is to step into the calves, I guess. All right, you can go into up dog anytime. Okay, now as you lower down your knees, we'll get back to dog pose in a bit, but lower down the knees and push the bolster carefully away. Kind of guide your hands down so your bolster's not on your, your underneath your core. And then as you stretch forward and downwards with your thighs, the front leg pattern, Feel where the hips reach forward into the belly and then stretch up through the ribs, through the collarbones until you're extending. And then you come back to actually a full reach of child's pose. So the knees move apart as wide as your ribs and your hips stretch back towards your feet. If they land on your feet just like they kind of swoop down to your feet and hold. That's okay. If that works for you, fine. You know, if your head is kind of pulling up in this position because you're not sure if you can park it yet, but we're not going to park child's pose quite yet. So as you come up, find the hands and the knees position. Feel the knees when they're turned out here. I want you to pivot the knees to feeling like the knees are centered, neutral, and come back to that up dog, but this time turn the fingers out so that the thumbs are pointing forward. If that's a little too much to your hand pressure, turn the index fingers forward, but work towards reaching through the navel this time so there's a little more belly pull and awareness through the tummy. Just give it a try. It may seem completely the same as the last direction in your, as, as you know it when you land your body in it, but as you come back to center, rear center, hands stretching open wide, round your back to cat pose, chin to chest. Inhale, arch the spine, cow pose arching the back, chest forward. Exhale, hollow the belly to cat. Okay, go a few times and as you do the motion with your ribs, your face, your spine, your shoulders, feel the alternating influence in your, the weight of your head, lowering down and tucking in. And then let's take that to the next level. We'll hook the toes under. And we'll actually make sure your mat is pretty clear because we're going to step wide on it. So I want you to lift up the knees so you're pushing back to a downward facing dog. And feel when your hands press the floor away. With the feet, stepping a little closer together. So I want you to get them as close as they'll comfortably access that combination of legs. Kind of check out your sensation of the legs when they unite and they're quite, um, they're quite together, right? Notice if it changes here, the volume of stretch in your hamstring. So we're gonna step the right foot forward. You might need your blocks to get the right foot forwards and then turn to your left so you have a wide stance, okay? You know, you can turn any direction you want, to be honest, if you prefer another direction, that's okay. 
in inner direction. <laughs> okay, so toes are in, heels are out, hands stretch forwards on the blocks, and my hands could go maybe lower, your hands might be a little bit higher, and they might not be as far stretched away. But position so that your head can actually relax here. So my arms really are sweeping forward to stretch out my ribs and your head, your neck relaxes down. Go in here, let your head nod a little bit side to side. Yeah, and feel the experience of the back musculature of the knee. So if it does feel like that's mostly a flexibility um, layer that you're working on, I would kind of feel if you could drop your kneecaps so you can feel like you can kind of suck up the quadriceps and then it's very active in the back of the legs. Come into the shape for a few more moments. Stay with the energy, inverting the body, head below the heart. Okay, let's try this. We're going to slide the blocks in. And I want you to take a little twist to the right side. So you're going to turn so the right arm lifts up. You're going to rotate the waist to the right. Feel the left inner thigh press in. And then come back down with the right hand and turn to the other side. But maybe wag your tail a bit as you start to encounter the twist. So you feel the inner thigh. Um, the selection right through the groins and then as you lift up that left arm feel the rotation gradually but i know sometimes it feels like you turn and that's it and it's not like a gradual uh sensation draw but when you rotate you might turn your head down to the right hand and then turn that left hand lower it down through the ribs and then as we move uh, forwards, what we're going to do is turn to that right side. We're going to take each side on this one. So when the right foot is parallel, the left heel stretches back. Uh, feel your involvement in your midsection. So if you can bring your hands down quite low, but your right side of your belly is kind of dropping and not really sustaining that reach as the left side can be, I would put the blocks up as high as they can go and then lengthen your right sitting bone back. Yeah, feel where that left hand is down below your shoulder. And we'll get into the right hip again. So my left foot is straight back from my left hand so I can stay balanced well. And then as your right hand moves to your buttock, right, that's what's turning. You're gonna rotate to the right, stretch your right arm up, and you try to keep that left heel reaching back. I realize the left heel is likely up and it's probably turning out. But you do the best you can to keep it prim and proper. If it's tough to do that, you step the left foot out a little bit to the left side behind you, and you might not fall over that way. <laughs> I find it, it's kind of a, a pose where you tend to, uh, to flip around a little bit. Come flip around. Try not to flip out. So lower your hand and step the left foot forward, bow into the legs, leg bow. Hands maybe hold the back of them and let the weight of your head nod a little forward and back, side to side. Relax the spine. Let the spine circulation relax all the way to the brainstem. Hands on blocks, right foot steps back, press back into that heel, and feel when you orient into the back leg, the fullness of the range. And if you're into towards limiting yourself, you might focus on a little expansion of your hands on the blocks and also the footing. So my footing seems a little bit elementary. My right foot is 
back behind the same line of energy of my right hand and block. So I kind of have to broaden it and it will make it so when I do pivot to the left now with my arm, that I have a wider base. That's the key is the wider base. So we're turning and trying to keep that left hip stretching back. Now you've already pigeoned that hip. So it's probably slightly different how the energy is moving through the, the joint, but we'll see. We'll get to the other pigeon really soon. So feel where the waist supposedly turns, right? It might be slightly pivoting, slightly heavy, but kind of feel where it rotates. It's natural to feel that. And then as that left hand lowers down, we're gonna shift our right knee down to the blanket. And then as your block shift to the side, step the left foot back carefully and then move your bolster in so that your bolster is now straight forward under your core and it's close to your blanket, but when you lower down through that up dog version and then feel the front of your pelvis, right? That pelvic spatially pushes, it kind of holds the bolster in place. It's kind of cool, right? How some of these ridges and uh, the pelvic basin has so much um, power, right? There's quite a bit of, of awareness there naturally. So when you lower down onto the bolster, I want you to take the elbows down so you're comfortable in your shoulders. Feel the ribs sink about 30 more percent down. And then concentrate, even if you let your eyes close, your head tilt on the ribs motion with the breath. So notice if you can feel some of that awareness through your rib cage. Okay, take a few moments here. Now when the hands slide back under the shoulders, we let the legs be fairly wide, right? So I'm trying to move my knees out. And then when I come up, I'm actually gonna place my body weight into table pose. I'm gonna come up and step the left foot to the top left corner, stretch the right quadricep, the right quadricep first. Okay, the left foot could be parallel, it could be turned open. So I'm gonna go with the turned open foot, but it's really completely up to your inner thigh. So I would notice my left inner thigh and how does it feel between the angle of straight forward with the toes or out towards you know, 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock. How does that feel through the current of the leg and the very top of the left thigh up into the rotator it's, it's kind of interesting to, to focus on quadricep on the right leg stretching and the left leg, that quad hip flexor zone, kind of pivoting at the top from your foot turning. Let's leave it at that complexity. Okay, center it for a few more moments. Hands could be on blocks or the floor or the bolster. Your elbows could be on the bolster. You know, as you switch sides, it's very simple, but let's take a little up dog in between. So as we hook our toes under our right foot, we're gonna slide the left foot back. You need to shake out the leg, okay? And then move your thigh bands both forward and up and find something that's a little less pressure than the last one. So there's no head pushing up here. It's forward tilt. Focus on the impact of the arms pushing down and up, okay? And then when you start to move your body weight back to neutral, feel how limited you need. You don't have to push your hips all the way back, but when you step the right foot to the top right corner, see if you can let that left front thigh lean into the experience of the bolster. And you might need to push the bolster back um, notice your right knee's reaction. So if you feel any little bit of discomfort in the knee, you want to back off on that 
activity level increasing, right? So it could be anything that could react in the knee. It could be inside, outside, front side. They're pretty wild. Knees can be pretty wild reactors. <laughs> so find what's comfortable enough for you. Elbows down or on blocks with the hands. So this has been a fairly active um, pattern of movement in the, the pelvis here today. So when you get the feel of kind of oiling through the joints, feel how that knee is out. And we're going to layer in the next few moments at your own pace into this right leg pigeon. So when you do the pattern of coming back to your hands, just that left knee, okay? It's going to be a layer here where I turn the bolster across my mat, so I just pivot the bolster, and walk the right foot across, toe heel, and you might feel the kind of the leg persuades your upper body to move kalunk down. You kind of kalunk, kalunk. So when you get there, you know, make some improvements along the way that would be useful for the travel here into the hip. So that might be a bolster or a pillow in the front, right? Keep in mind, this is just a little easier on the arms and the wrists. Um, anything will do, right? Any kind of cushion will do that's high enough. The higher it is, maybe more comfortable, but not too high. Like you wouldn't want to put your arms up on probably like a a couch or something, if you're near one, that might be too much for your back muscles. So find where it's fairly, just a normal curve in the back, a natural arch. Nothing too back bendy, okay. And then feel that back bend. Let the spine's current feel from the back bend. It holds the hip in place. Kind of interesting, right? If you have your spine in neutral or a little bit of curve compared to slumping the shoulders down, right? It's a little more supportive of your pelvis. So feel where the weight is into that right hip. Breathe slow. The key is the right hip weight. Now the back leg could bend, right? We know we can work with that option. However, if the knee that you're on right now is sometimes a tender knee for things, but it feels okay, but it's still tender, when you're not in this pose, you would probably wanna not have your back knee pulling the foot in very much, because it's just gonna pry over to that knee, the ligaments, maybe, just in caution. Might as well be um, considerate. Might as well, okay. Okay, so now as we do this pattern of coming up and around to our sage series, what you'll do is you'll shift your bolster. Last time we did a little cat cow in between. And what we're gonna do here is swing that left leg forward. I wanna keep it very same sequencing on second side right away. So when I come down to the floor in front of my bolster, I'm gonna pivot this bolster up on top of the blankets, right? So I can make it pretty easy going. I don't have to change around my props to be looking the same. They don't have to look the same, but they should feel the same. So when I put the sand on my side or my back, that's an option here, but I twist to my right and then my arms lower down. And as I lean the body weight into this bolster, let your head turn where it's comfortable, okay? Not where it's just not completely okay. 
So find where it's easy for your shoulders. Spread the arms open out of the rib cage. And then let the weight of the back muscles actually center into your ribs and then relax your heart. Yeah, so if you have that sand, you can get the handle of your sandbag and drag it across the back. Sometimes it works nicely here and it's comfortable, but not always easy to get. But do the best you can if you're using your sand. Take a few moments here. Yeah. Let the mind balance on its side, on the hemisphere. Now feel what is important in this shape, right? The things that matter as far as the heart rate slowing down and this left side band that we're going to work all the way through. We're gonna work through the side, to the intercostals and then to that hip layer on the left leg. So to get the balancing rhythm through your sides first, because the hip is kind of something you sit into most of the time. You walk, your pelvis is a huge play in the walk, but when we come up in the next few, you're gonna pivot your bolster and try to find that right amount of support. Now, you know, sometimes you want more blanket under your head. Sometimes you want a block on the other side, but it's like you're, you're trying to get your whole structure. I mean, you're a living vital being, right? So you have sensations and feelings and you know, all those things that make you who you are. But as far as all of us sharing a similar experience structurally, which assuming this has some similarities, a few between us, um, kind of join in that connection where the, now I'm on my right side down, side body, left side is open. And then if I add my object on the inside of the left knee to support my knee, and then I get my sand on my ribs now. You might connect the ribs. I mean, you know you could connect the ribs. There might not be any dots, but there's ribs. And there's a lot of them, right? As long as, long as they're all there and not, not, nothing has slipped out, it feels pretty good. It's when, it's when one is out where you can't believe how, how odd it feels. So it's amazing when they're working and they're connected the way they ought to be connected. You don't have any ribs out, hopefully. So do what you can if you have any underlying conditions right now and internally, you know, find a way to create a shape that's soothing for you, which might be a little different than my assumption of the pose for you. So find what works. The right knee close to the bolster is a good idea. And then where that left arm is over, I'm turning a little towards the screen here. So I know most of you are probably a little more right side of your head down, but feel for the life of your body, that length in the side, the weight into the right hip, left thigh is open, and transfer the focus into your intercostals. Ribs in motion with breath. Now I suggest if this feels good and you don't want to leave it quite yet, just to stay with it. Those that are pretty 
hands here, you get right into that hip chamber. Once you sit up, it's a different back experience for your spine and your shoulders, right? It's a little more challenging. So when you do come out of this fuller body stretch and you start to dissect a bit, you know, spend the moment feeling this reach. And then when we turn to our right side, I'm gonna just bring the left knee, kind of hug it into the right, and then roll to the right. And then as I come up, I'm gonna take the seat on the bolster. Okay, I'm gonna do one more side here. Left leg forward of right, sand on the left leg, locks in front are good to have. Um, the ball is, you know, if you have anything to put under your right leg, might be nice and comfortable. Your basic seated hip opener, right? So I'm here, I've got my balance with my sitting bones. I know it seems obvious they'd be balanced here, but it takes a moment to arrive. And then when you do lean forwards, you know, get a feel here. If your body feels like it kind of tumbles into it and your ribs kind of just drop and the heart collapses a bit. You might get your blocks up higher, stabilize and feel where it's really basic. Like right where it counts, just where you feel like, okay, I'm stable, I'm gonna make it. And then maybe you saunter a little forward, you kind of lean into the weight, but the key here would be to successfully arrive at sensation in this left hip. I know some of you kind of strive for moving your blocks to the right and going a little deeper with it, and that's okay, you have your choice. And those that want to add the idea of the fire logs pose, left leg is right over the right leg, so it's crossed, right? It's either leg crossed over leg, stacking fire logs. Don't light them, <laughs> okay? Or it's going to be steer pose, left knee over right knee. You can see that these can have a little complication for some knee joints. So if the, you have this real easy glide in your legs, you might go for it. It might feel really nice. So it just kind of depends on the moment, you know? Some of us are just have joints that work that way. So if you're here in a simple left leg is the top leg, no matter how you go with it, leaning forwards. Okay, this is a buildup for a twist. So you wanna find where you're building the stability with that left leg in the front. You know, come back up, blocks out, um, place the sand to the right leg and cross the left leg over the right. Now, if there was a little suspense getting this left hip on top and the front, you're gonna turn left and then hook the right elbow or hold the knee and then move the ribs to the left side so you're in that rotation, yes. So if your sense of direction is moving kind of in this lateral perspective, turning to the left side, you might spend the most energy with the arm awareness. So feel your arm pressing to that right leg or left leg. You might feel your hand hold the knee and maybe that offers you a little more ease in your shoulder joint. So spend some energy with the twist, focusing bigger time on the belly now turning. We're about ready to get that belly to basically go upside down in, in Vipa Rita Karani. So it'll be a nice way to work with the inner space, which is twists and inversions. So feel the turn of things. Feel your head. I know the head being on top can always be a bit of a quandary, I find, in posture practice. It kind of likes to look and see and be part of the, the cycle. So feel where you're comfortable with your neck, tilting it turning it. Okay, and then when you feel you can come back to center, counter twist it, left arm inside left leg, right hand back. I know the blankets might be uh, slightly sufficient for some. It might need, need a little bit more like a block. So use what you can and 
you know, find what that left inner thigh, if it feels some circulation intensity here, notice that. How can you not notice a little bit going on? And then as you unwind forwards, we're going to move the sand first. And before we come back, let's take our legs to uncross and sit. So you're simply moving both thighs in front. You might shake them out anyway, because it feels kind of nice to do that. Uh, tap them out. And then when you fully push through your feet and you get a feel of your back um, arch, right? Feel the natural curve in your back. Okay. So when we move on to our back on the bolster, I want you to keep that curve, especially um, that lumbar um, chunk, right? You want to kind of feel that that's like an important chunk that feels similar on both sides of the lower back. So bend the knees and scoot to the very center and forward of your bolster, but you're on it. If you've got lots of bulk behind you, blankets and so forth, just move them off to the side. You just need one blanket back there. You still need one. Okay. So we're gonna shoot the feet to the sky. So the key would be, I roll backwards, right? So if you think of a somersault, right? You're usually kind of crouched in to get there. It's kind of like that, isn't it? It's like a crouching position. So when I move back, I kind of lose that a little bit. So I'm gonna lean back, I'm gonna put my elbows down. If you have long arms, they might be off the bolster. And then when I put a knee up and another knee up and then I lower back, I get busy finding my blanket hooked as close for me to my shoulders as I can for my neck. So I'm gonna get the blanket in closer today than I'm used to. Just kind of see how that comfort is for you. Now, get, take a few moments to kick your feet up. I forget about the feet, up, up, up. Maybe shake them out. You're in your final spinal here, so this should all be easy breezy. All right. All right, coasting. Okay, so feel how the back of the pelvis, I can't tell you how to feel, but you might notice the elevation of the back of the pelvis. Okay, it, it's kind of vulnerable, right, where your rear, it's a vulnerable sensation. So I want you to, to find where you can place your sand on your feet so this whole back area almost feels like it's kind of got this sheen of protection. Right, the sand is weight bearing, so it will likely reverse that flow of gravity, reverse gravity's downward pull. And I don't think you feel the prolapse sensation, right? Your, your bladder's in control in this pose. This is a really controlled pose for that zone. So make sure there's a sliver of light center of the knee so they're not jammed together. Uh, the feeling of your heels doesn't need to jut out so uh, physically, but you might sense here if you have ease to get your belt. Um, take the belt. We're going to actually buckle up the thighs after you get your sand on. So if you don't have your sand on yet, don't buckle your thighs and then put sand on. That could be tough. But you're going to buckle up if you are interested in this version. You can try it. If you don't, you can hold your belt overhead and stretch your arms. You can do it. You could do a little of both, maybe, if you got enough belt. Okay, so take the belt around the legs, and my belt is so that my legs are not completely tied up, but I can feel the belt at the top part of the thigh tissue. I'm going to tighten it up so I feel that, but I want to feel this counterbalance of that symmetry in the legs, there's still some light between the knees, kind of holds the legs accountable. It's not so vulnerable around your tush right now. It's a little bit more compact. And see if you can deliver this really interesting balance of thigh circulation with the belt, feet flexing, and then take your arms back overhead Try to reach through your shoulders, through your armpits, through your hands, all those things. Relax your eyes. Feel where the weight of your head is centered. And consciously 
belly expands and contracts. See if you can relax your, you know, you're, you're seeking for sometimes creativity and practice. That's something I do is think of that, but maybe find where it's really simple and important to get all the lines um, at the same point. If your belt is on the legs and you're noticing your knees are getting closer, your, your work is there. You've got to push out a little bit into the belt with your thigh muscles. So it's, it's fairly active at that point. So you might really notice your knees buckle in after you forget about them. So try to stay like you're disciplining, you're creating those cycles of concentration and you check the checkpoints. You're gonna feel where, oh, okay, keep my legs active, I keep my feet flexing. And then I kind of drop into the pose. I feel the tailbone pressing into the bolster. I don't think it could get any more interesting. Oh, good. Now let go of the, the belt. Let, let unbuckle that piece. Just let it off. Okay, and feel if it's like a spaciousness in the back of the legs, if it opened up anything. If anything, it took away something. And then as the legs bend, we're gonna do a version of uh, plow pose, but we're not gonna put our feet over our head or our knees and our ears or anything. It's a restorative version. So we'll take our sand to the back of the legs. This is important. Now, instead of trying to clutch onto my sand bag, like hug it, like knees to chest, this is like door one and it alleviates the back a bit. But you could let the feet lift, but I would just let them kind of float. So it's more like a child's pose, right? And except for you're on your back. Of course, your feet don't float in child's pose. They're crammed on, your seat is cramming them down. So this is like the most restorative version you could even sample. There's really no knee pressures, but your arms are both out to the sides. So the elbows are bending. The hands are out, not perfectly straight out, but out. Take a few more moments here. Let the spine really adapt to the change. Okay, and then as we start to shift our sand, if this feels good, this is a good one to come back to if you're, you know, challenged in your abdominal organs, your digestive tract, this is a real go-to. Right, especially having the sand on the back of the legs instead of just the knees to the chest and rocking a little side to side, just real slow without the bolster under your back as well. As well, the nice thing with the bolster is it just picks up these parts and massages them a little deeper. Right, things get a little bit more sensation that way. Okay, slide off your sand. Let's take our knees in towards chest zone hands on bolster. If you want to let your knees shift a little side to side or alternate knee to chest, go for it. Anything that feels like I got to do that before I move my bolster, go with that. And then as I bring the knees in, I'm going to push my hands into the bolster. And then as I scoot it forward, we want to get everything in this short time here, that our, my bolster is near my tush. Now, when I put my feet on it, you might be able to see if you're watching, if you have a little corner in your screen watching your um, alignment, that's sometimes a smart idea. And then you can see if your knees are straight over your ankles. There's good things about it. There really are. So <laughs> you'll get used to it. But when you push down and you lift up your hips, my knees now are starting to go a little bit over my ankles. So I've got to push my bolster forward enough that when I push down, I don't feel any charge in the knees. I feel all of it in my legs and my glutes. So you decide if your blanket's going to be there. You might need to get rid of it so your neck doesn't have so much flexion. But I want you to hold the sides of your hips for this one. So my elbows try to scoot in towards my closer in only as far as they comfortably can go. 
Avoid turning your head side to side. It's not a smart thing for the cervical vertebrae to be pressurized in this position, right? And twisting. So we don't want to twist and press, pressurize. So as you lift up your hips, now bring your arms both overhead and then feel the lift of the hips a little higher, like this is your max. If you have the option now, I want you to lower your spine and choose one of these two objects, or one of these three, ball, block, or belt around the legs, okay? I know the block and ball is obvious to you, between the knees, okay? I'm gonna show the belt because that's not the clear choice that we use every time. Um, so if you belt up the legs, it's quite active in your glute, your buttock muscles. So I'm going to put the bell a little higher up on my legs. Actually, no, change that in mind. Put it in the middle so your knees don't splay out, right in the center of the thigh. If you're using the block as well, or the ball, you could add the block or the ball between the knees in this one as well. And then you really are working the legs. So lift the hips up, belt or ball, block or one of the three or all of the above. <laughs> I don't think you can get them all. Stretch your arms overhead and lower your spine down. I want you to do about six of these. So you're going to have five or six more, depending on where you start counting. And when you flow through the spine, slow it down. Feel the back touch, 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 lower smooth out that lower basin of the back and arch the spine. Inhale, press down into your feet, lift the hips, stretch the arms overhead. Exhale, glide down the spine. And now feel for once in this final set, especially the next couple, two or three, that you have the scooping position, you have this balance and collaboration between leg strength, pelvic floor movement and lift through the pelvic floor because the, pel the power of the pelvis is immense. So try to use the power of the pelvis to lift your hips up. And then when you lower down the spine, scoop it in, knees in, Remove anything between, unbuckle, get busy to get to this next channel here. So we're going to move our bolster to the right side of our mat. And I want you to turn that bolster so that you can lengthen the right leg besides it and cross the left leg onto it, okay? It's a pretty swift change. So that our back muscles, hopefully you can stay with that kind of swift movement into the second glide of the hip. But I want to keep it so we kind of plug into it, get all these things in. So we have this crossover of left thigh to the bolster. If you want a sandbag addition, add it to the leg. And if you have a ball, place it to the sacrum. And then stretch your left arm open. Feel if you are crossing the leg over that you still want this nice medley of movement from your hip to the arch of your back and to your left arm. So this piece for me is the arm piece to my ribs. It's important that I feel like it's elongating this zone, especially my ribs that I've worked from the beginning of class now to this moment. And my arch of my back, my hips. And then just let your eyes close. Let your head turn to the left. Breathing, belly, motion. Feel the direction of the heart open. And feel how you move through the center of the body.
Now find wherever your regular rhythm of movement came from, like from your back, did you twist from your hip? Did you make the twist initiate from your lower back? So one thing to, to in this classification of movement, um, how you arrive at the shape is to, to focus on where you initiate from, right? That's a, a clear emphasis and practice that helps you and preserves you and rehabilitates you, but also um, keeps things intact and, and supported so there's less chance of an injury. And then you can actually feel like the, the practice helps you release tension. Right, so there. Sometimes in this pose, there can be a feeling of kind of retention. I think too. So what you might do when you come out of the side, since it's one side driven at a time, and it can be a little bit surprising, the differences on each side initially, before you get to the other side. I would encourage you to try a bridge pose without any bolster under your feet. This one, so you'll slide anything away that's on or around you here in your back or your hip. And when you come around, feel your knees bend, walk your feet towards your seat, back on the floor, um, all the way through what you feel is your buttocks and noticing the connection of the buttocks, right? And then there's right in the center, you're gonna feel where your hips are, the back of the hips. It's kind of interesting here. So lift up your heels and Try to let the pressure of your back kind of scoop. So you have that scoop back. And then as you lift up your hips, your heels stay up. They don't have to be like a perfect lifted heel, but they're just a little heel up. I wouldn't know how to live in that position, but I get to feel a little heel lifting. And as the hips lift up, the glutes, they feel like the rear muscles kind of press together. So I want you to try to lift up and then lower your heels down and feel real solid in the glutes, the sides. And you might step your feet out a little wider than you used to in the bridge pose, just a little bit wider. And then as you let your arms move back overhead, give them that freedom to move, okay? Lift up your heels again, and then lower your spine smoothly all the way down. And once you breathe that lower back spatially connected, Bring your right knee into your chest and let the left leg sweep straight down. Feel the knee drawing on that right side, stay supported there. And bring the left foot in and switch the leg hook, hands behind the left leg, right leg down. Feel the top of the right thigh relax, as well as the left thigh, right? Even if it's hooked in towards you. Slide the right foot in, relax the grip with your hands and lower the left foot and take the bolster over to the left side of your mat. And as you slide it down, you're gonna keep it easy. Now initiation from where? So my left leg goes straight down. It doesn't have to be perfectly rigid, but let it just flow. And then as the right leg crosses over, try to initiate from your midsection, blanket under head, Got to forget something every class. Okay. Now I can have a ball to the sacrum. I could go with simply my sandbag on my right outer leg. But like I mentioned, this is final state right here, this final couple of moments. So feel where the sand is packed on and keep it very easy going. Right? Try not to get too clever on your ideas of, oh, I could get this limb here this extension, but kind of have the, the eye of the storm, like you're really noticing where is the focus in my body initiating from. So most of us think of twists um, that move from the thoracic vertebral column, right? That's the focus point of turning. So if you sort of forgot about the rib space, this would be a good time to re, um, realign with that. Feel your arms open, feel the chest, supported, arriving at any prop setups that you need and let your head turn to the right and breathe. You 
Continue to surrender the weight of that right leg into the bolster. If you need to touch the leg with the hand because an arm delivery is different than just the, the object that's not um, animated, right? Your arm is a little more animated than your sandbag. So you might need to animate the pose a bit and kind of use your arm to press, but pressing and making that depression in the leg is not always the best thing for the knee, although it can feel kind of good. But, you know, realize that it's, it's got, it needs to be a little bit above the, the knee because you just never know. I mean, it's just such slender uh, tissues and around the knee compared to this, the thicker thigh which is sort of like a shield on it, <laughs> thigh shield. So as you spend the moments here to feel the rotation, feel the breath reach in and sweep out the lungs. And that's exactly the focus that we're going to really spiral around to at the end here is that sweeping of the lungs. It could be called lung sweeper at the end, lung sweeper pose. Now feel the twist of the, the lungs, right? Feel how you turn your head, how you twist through the midsection, upper ribs. And now we're going to focus in the very front of the legs and the final pose and it's supported bridge. So we've done bridges. But now we're going to take a moment, kind of break the pattern of simply being so, so fluid in your practice, right? We're going to set up for a final pose. So I want you to move any objects you have on, shift them away and feel when you move your knee back in towards the chest, you might have to really get your knees in. But don't get to this, this hinge at the hip because this is going to go flush and down. Maybe hold it in for a moment and roll to the side. Okay, now if you have a couple bolsters, you'll use both on this one. If you have one, it's perfectly fine. Okay, so the back of your mat has a blanket. Okay, you'll have your bolster right in front of that. And then if you have a second cushion towel stack, it's in front of your um, bolster that you're sitting on. So you might just take it so it's kind of like this T shape, right? I've got my blanket across, bolster straight down, straight forward, vertical. I need a belt, I need a sandbag, and that's it, right? That's enough, isn't it? So if you have an extra bolster cushion, it's going to be under your feet. That's under your uh, calves here, so it kind of floats you up. So I'm going to scoot forward on the bolster. Now I'm a shorty, so I know that this is fine for me. But if you're really tall, you do want to be on the edge of your bolster because you got this whole length to go. I'm, I can slide back, but if you're too far in the middle, even if you're short, you still might have to scoot this way. It's easier to slide back than it is to try to go forward when you're on your back. So let's see. Those that want to make this like really specific alignment, Get your belt around your thighs, buckle up. Okay, get the belt higher on the legs so you can control it. Otherwise, don't use a belt. You don't have to. It will keep your legs together. Now, when you lower back, you're going to bring your head down to that blanket, and I want you to get your shoulders. You got to make some space here so that your shoulders, the shoulder, the top of the shoulder, you are feeling the floor with it. It's not off the floor. I want you to feel the chest opens, okay? Now the legs are in that together state when right? I'm talking about the front thigh lids here. And then I've got my sand to my thighs. And maybe you have sand across the ribs. And the final pose here is supported bridge. Setu Bandha Sarvangasana, okay? Now, if you don't wanna do this pose and you wanna do legs up the wall, um, support a Shavasana with your legs on a bolster bench, that's great. Right, so find what works for you. We support you in either version that you want to rest in the final processing absorption moments here. So if I'm here and I have my bolster under my calves, it's kind of nice because my heels can float up. 
and then the arms are in that cactus shape or they're straight out. Depends on the space you have. Generally, it's taught to have them straight out. Okay, so that would be preferred if you have space for that. But if not, equalize the arms. Let the weight of your occipital ridge, right, that bump in the center of your skull, you want to feel that is lengthening. If you need to tuck in your blanket under that ridge, that's fine. I'd rather have your throat feel like there's a little bit of circulation moving into your thyroid and your parathyroids here at your throat. So it feels like there's a tiny bit of this chin tuck, right? It's called Jalandhara Bandha. So it's circulation for your throat, endocrine glands here. And then let the mind center back kind of to that C of the brain without the eyes seen, closing the eyes, eye pillows on or turning off your lighting, that might be good. And feel how the legs react. Maybe they need to change a little bit, subtle reactions and return the body to that symmetrical breath in for four out for four. And then gradually exhale, lengthens one to two counts further than the inhale. Feel that big opening here in the chest cavity into the lungs. The energy almost immediately moves into the upper lobes of the lungs. Now you can feel the breath moving into that channel immediately in this pose. At any time you can bend your knees, put your feet on the floor if your back is feeling too much pressure. That would mean you have to move your belt usually in your sand. But with a few more moments here, feel the belly stretch, feel the core lengthen. Okay, now as we start to move our direction through the arms, we'll slide the arms a little closer into the sides. You might do all of this with your eyes in a passive gaze, kind of internal focus. And if I have the sand across anywhere, just shift off all your props that are on you. And as you bend your knees, you'll feel the feet tuck into the sides. And then let your hips lift up a little bit. So I encourage you to take this pose where you slide back and then you push the bolster down. And you might like to have your tailbone on the actual bolster and come into Baddha Konasana, feet together, knees out. It might feel kind of nice to take that sweep into the thigh stretch. It might be better for you to bring your knees in and let your legs kick up for a second to ease the back. And then we direct so that we feel the feet below the knees, scoot the bolster away, and then hug your knees in and stay a moment here as you prepare to come up for a short connectivity between all of us here. So feel where the body is rocking, feel where your hands push you up, and then you might sit on a bolster, you might sit on a the feet, however it feels comfortable, but feel that collective awareness of the knees moving open and the sitting bones centering heavily below the spine. And since there's two sitting bones, one spine, 
right? The next thing there's two of, right, are going to be the shape of the upper body. So feel where the upper body slants down and relaxes the hands on your lap. Feel the shoulders center back. And let's feel where the shift is in the mind from the practice, relaxing your head down to your heart center. Breathing, feeling that awareness of the belly pull with the in and the out breath current. Lift the hands up to meet together at the heart space. Surrendering here. And let's unite our breath to close this practice together in our homes. Inhale together. And with exhalations, bowing into your heart. In gratitude, namaste. Thank you. Ah, thank you for joining me. Most appreciated.